Westfield Memorial Hospital provides high-quality health care to residents of Western New York, offering patients the most sophisticated medical advancements while keeping the ease and familiarity of a community hospital. Support for Chautauqua Sunrise has been provided by WRFA 107.9 FM, Jamestown's public radio station, streaming online 24-7 at WRFALP.com. Low power to the people. Meter's Restaurant, a family tradition for over 50 years in downtown Ripley, is a proud supporter of Chautauqua Sunrise. Meter's provides all-day dining, banquet services, and custom catering, specializing in pie. Funding for Chautauqua Sunrise is provided in part by the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, with offices in Jamestown and Dunkirk, helping businesses to prosper throughout Chautauqua County. From supporting people with disabilities to enjoy great lives to providing health care services that are available to anyone, the Resource Center has been improving our county for more than 60 years. Learn more about how the Resource Center makes a positive difference in people's lives. Is getting vaccinated on your to-do list? We can help you check it off because we make getting vaccinated easy. You've got this because we've got you. To learn more, visit yougotthis.usaging.org. From the Access Chautauqua Studios in Mayville, it's Chautauqua Sunrise. Chautauqua Sunrise is hosted by Doc Hamels and supported by the award-winning volunteers at Access Chautauqua. We are here to share local news, colorful interviews, and events of interest to everyone. Chautauqua Sunrise is broadcast live Saturday mornings each week from 9 to 10 a.m. Send events via email or call us live. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. And now, from the Access Chautauqua Studios, it's Chautauqua Sunrise! I never know exactly when I'm going to start talking until I see myself. Hey, everybody, welcome to Chautauqua Sunrise. What a beautiful morning it is, right? It is a Chautauqua Sunrise out there. It's like 9.01 in the morning, I don't know, 9.03, and uh, the weather was a little cool this morning. Gosh, it was dewy out there. Um, Brody, my dog, you see in the in the begin, or beginning of the promotions here, uh, uh, he, the, <laughs> the grass is so long, he's, he comes in the house and he's soaking wet. <laughs> I guess we got to cut the grass again. Hope you're all doing well, and uh, we're going to kick off a Mother's Day week, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms and grandmas and the great-grandmas and the aunts that uh, are the surrogate <laughs> moms and the, all the guys out there that are surrogate moms. I, I fit that bill quite often. <laughs> so anyways, uh, it looks like a great weekend, and I hope everybody's getting together and, and celebrating moms around the world. Um, good morning again to all of you that are watching us live. Good morning. Uh, to anyone that's watching us across Chautauqua County, and good afternoon. To all my friends in Europe, and especially Natalia and company in uh, Kiev, Ukraine, hang in there. And also anybody watching us in Australia, Justin, it's tomorrow in Australia. So, <laughs> good day. And um, let's see what else. Uh, we want to uh, also remind you that throughout the show, if you have a comment or question or announcement, your club or organizations have a fundraiser. Here it comes, 716-753-5225. Isn't that amazing how that magically appears when I ask for it? Throughout the week, if uh, you want to send us an announcement, which I highly recommend, email us at Chautauqua Sunrise, all one word, at gmail.com, and we will get your announcement out for you, and it's free of charge. Remember, Chautauqua Sunrise is all about all the cool things here in Chautauqua County, and uh, I hope we've... Uh, have done that over the years. We're in our 10th season. We're wrapping up year 10. You're getting older. You were just a little kid, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, two birthdays this week. We have the two birds. So we have Randy and uh, Justin Bird. So happy birthday, guys. You made it to another one. Keep going. You're a young guy. You look at your dad. You got to keep going, man. 
<laughs> okay, um, there's a few other announcements. Holy mackerel, last night I've seen pictures all over the uh, Facebook, except at my house, and I looked. The Aurora Borealis, the, the, um, the sky, northern lights were out, and I... I don't know. I live on the escarpment. I couldn't see anything. My wife was really upset. She goes, I missed it again. So I'm hoping tonight we uh, just stay up, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, if you are, have the view of the skies tonight, you might want to take a look. So Aurora Borealis. Uh, for those of you that have been following me on my video podcast with Jim McQuiston about uh, Oak Island, uh, we are in our second season and we're going to be featuring that here on uh, uh, Access Chautauqua. Uh, this the week of 518, so May 18th through the 24th at 1245 p.m. and 645 p.m. We're going to be showing that episode 13, and we are featuring uh, Laird Niven, who's the archaeologist from the Curse of Oak Island, and uh, it's been getting a lot of attention on YouTube. So anyways, that's going to be showing up here in the next week. All right, what else do I have? I think that's all I want. Oh, good afternoon. To my listeners on WRFA 107.9, low part of the people, Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. So all of you that have joined us, thank you. I know we are a few days uh, into the future here, but we have a great show in store for you. We've sort of been doing a theme uh, on mental health and so forth, and uh, we got three folks in the studio that just can't wait to get on, and we're going to be addressing that topic here shortly, so stay tuned. All right, I have some announcements I want to share with you, so uh, bear with me. I'm putting on the specs, and here we go. My very, very good friends over at Lakeshore Center for the Arts are putting on a uh, program, a show, Ancestral Voices. That's slide 15, Jeff. Okay, it's, it's a family story by A.R. Gurney. Set in Buffalo, New York in the 1940s, Ancestral Voices is a bittersweet often very funny story perceived through the eyes of a young Eddie whose family is turned upside down when his grandmother unexpectedly divorces his grandfather to marry his grandfather's best friend. <laughs> Somebody diagram that sentence, I don't know. Simultaneously, the outside world is undergoing historical changes akin to Gurney's love letters. Ancestral Voices is performed informally by actors reading from scripts. That's going to be shown on May 17th well, not shown, performed. May 17th at 7, May 18th at 7, May 19th at 2. Tickets are only $20. Where else can you get live theater? And that's at the Lakeshore Center for the Arts over in Westfield. My really good friends, and I say really good friends, because yours truly, I was one of two actors in the show Love Letters, which was written by the same author, A.R. Gurney, and my uh, good friend Joan Caruso is going to be in this again. So... Check it out, it's gonna be a really good show. All right, let's go on to the next slide 16. We have a benefit and fundraiser coming up for Shriners Hospital for Children on Memorial Day weekend. So this is one of those mark your calendars, it's gonna be here before you know it. It's gonna be at the Chautauqua County uh, Fairgrounds, May 24, 25, featuring a uh, sound by Skip Lanfear, Shriners Entertainment, there'll be raffles, bluegrass auction, which I have no idea what that means, family friendly, there's going to be beer and food vendors uh, available, live music, and a whole lot more. And if you want to make a donation, give, them a, give Mark a call at 490-5495. Again, 490-5495. And for more information, you can also check that out. So this is uh, the benefit and fundraiser for Shriners Hospital for Children in Erie, Pennsylvania. We support them big time. Moving right along, let's go to the Fenton Historical Society. Okay, they have a Blue Star Memorial Garden Dedication Ceremony coming up uh, on Saturday, May 18th at, hmm, I'm not sure. So, One o'clock. Oh, there we go. Well, the, the date and the time all blended together. <laughs> okay. Look at this. See, I'm not making this up. It's 2024-1. Okay, May 18th at 1 p.m. Yowza. Uh, the Blue Star Moms are, are supportive of our, our service people that are active right now, and they just do some phenomenal work. So that's something coming up. Fenton Historical Society, or their center, May 18th, 1 p.m. All right, let's go to the theater. Okay, now this is an announcement, so I don't have a, 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 a chart for this. All right, this is kind of cool. This just came in yesterday, I think. Ready? Here we go. <clears throat> The Regilene Center for the Arts is offering the community a chance to become part of its historic theater's legacy. For a donation, 
patrons can make commemorations by having names and messages engraved on plaques that will be placed on new theater seats. The Legacy uh, Seats campaign is running now and will continue while seats are available. Individuals, families, and businesses and organizations are encouraged to participate. Justin, my birthday's in January, and if you feel that you would like to put me in, oh, never mind. <laughs> Suggested inscriptions include names of family members, businesses or organizations, memorable dates marking birthdays and anniversaries, impactful messages and memorials to loved ones. Donations are only $100 per seat in the main areas of the floor and balcony areas, of course. $250 for uh, low seats and $500 for premium seats in the first four rows of the theater. I'm good with general seating. Uh, the legacy seat <laughs> donations are tax deductible. The naming rights will remain for the, for the lifetime of the seats, which is expected to last for well over two decades. <laughs> I'll be 92, Justin, at that time. Uh, the initiative helps to cover <laughs> the growing cost of sustaining a wide array of arts programming at the 100-year-old historic theater. Seats and rural uh, sponsorships are available on a first-come, first-served basis. First 20 rows would be all right. Uh, we are so excited to offer this rare chance for community members to make their mark through uh, these donation plaques, says the Reginald's director, Hillary Meyer. We set a donation level that would be accessible to many people and are hoping that this will allow hundreds of people who are interested in supporting the arts to have a chance to join the Legacy Seats campaign. Uh, following our recent sound and lighting upgrades in the theater, we are delighted to upgrade the seating as well. We want our patrons' overall experience at the Reg to be one of comfort and enjoyment. The current seats dating back to the 1950s, well, it's not that old, are scheduled to be removed for the first week of June. The, well, I'm sort of like in the same era. The community is encouraged to reserve their legacy seats soon before they sell out. For more information, here we go. 484-7070, 484-7070, grab a seat and, and make a donation. The seat replacement was funded to support by support uh, from the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of the Office of the Governor and the New York State Legislature, the Sheldon Foundation, the Hultquist Foundation, and Chautauqua County Partnership for Economic Growth slash County of uh, Chautauqua Industrial Development Agency. All right, if you haven't been in the Reg in a while, it's absolutely gorgeous they have done such a wonderful job and i just love visiting there okay so and the, and, and the reg is part of really helping support what we do here through the wrfa they're all kind of connected so please think about making a donation all right and then finally dunkirk announces annual memorial day parade the city of dunkirk festivals and special events department are proud to announce the annual memorial day parade in downtown dunkirk on monday may 27th the parade is sponsored by DFT Communications and a whole bunch of other folks. And the parade, let's see, hang on. It starts at 10 a.m. in Memorial Park, followed by the parade at 11 a.m. down Central Avenue into Washington Park. Okay, so if you want to know more information, give Ryan a call at 366-9886. 366 Six. And so that's May 27 for the Dunkirk Memorial Day Parade. Now, just as a part of Selfish Promotion, uh, Access Chautauqua, from what I've been told, we will be covering the Mayville Parade for, I don't know, like the 15th time or something like that. And I think I've moderated it for 12 times. I think I was a young boy then. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's coming up on the 4th of July in Mayville. So let's hope for good weather. We're going to take a little break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. My mom, when she... Here we go. Okay, we're back. Thank you. Uh, we were just discussing uh, 
the opportunity to get a seat at the Reginald A, and so we encourage you to do the same. Okay, today returning to Chautauqua Sunrise is a, a friend of ours, Jeff Winton, who is uh, representing his organization, Rural Minds, that talks a lot about mental health, especially here in Chautauqua County and rural parts of the United States. And welcome back, Jeff. Thank you very much, Doc. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be back. I think you were enjoying me going through my announcements. <laughs> we, we, how do you make announcements fun? We try our best. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it's good to see you again. Last time we saw each other was yeah, in the wintertime. Yeah, the weather was a little different. It was a little snowy yeah. getting up the hill here. So today you've brought some folks and friends with you. So I'll let you yes. do the introductions and then we're going to get into what we're going to talk about. Today. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So I'd like to introduce you to a mother and daughter pair, which <laughs> seemed to be very appropriate for Mother's Day. Yeah. Uh, next to me is Opal Sprague, who is very well known here in Chautauqua County. I <laughs> grew up knowing Opal and oh, wow. she was a fixture at the Chautauqua County Fair and many other things in the 4-H program and uh, was a friend of, of my parents and right. my right. aunts and uncles mm -hmm. and someone that uh, I've always had a great deal of respect for. So I'm, I'm delighted and honored to so have Opal, her So Opal, you can here. tell us stories about when Jeff was little then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I wasn't so little when I was young. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we also have um, Elaine Sprague Smith here, okay. Opal's daughter. And Elaine came in from the Catskills to be here with us today. Oh, okay. And they're both uh, leaders with the Grange, uh, which is a partner of rural minds in the mental health space and uh, if I may I'll have each of them tell a little about their yeah, background yeah, and, please do and uh, then we'll jump into the conversation so Elaine would you like to sure so I grew up in Chautauqua County on Sprague Hill Road <laughs> and uh, outside of Levant you have your own hill yes <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and, right. uh, Graduated from Faulkner High School mm -hmm. and then went to Buffalo State and You went to Buffalo State? Yes. Mm -hmm. I graduated from there too. Yes. And, uh, I thought you looked for that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> and uh, I got a degree in family and consumer studies and uh, education. Mm -hmm. So I became a home economics teacher, a family and consumer science teacher, mm -hmm. and I've taught for 34 years in the Northern Catskills, um, Delaware County, uh, New York, which is about 300 miles from here yeah. and um, I also uh, got a advanced certificate in American Sign Language and I taught American Sign Language uh, courses on distance learning um, as an adjunct. And I have to ask you that. how did you get involved with American Sign Language? Um, through Grange and uh, <laughs> really? yes so Deaf Activities was a health project in Grange when I was growing up. Um, I became interested. There was a camp outside of Binghamton in Port Crane called the Path of Life Camp. Mm -hmm. And they sponsored deaf children to come with hearing children. And I was a counselor there for oh, a few wow. years. Yeah. Um, got to know a lot more about uh, the program. Um, I was in the Junior Miss pageant here in Chautauqua County. And my talent was uh, signing a song, I believe, by the Letterman. <laughs> and um, I won that category. Wow. Well, congratulations. So um, sign language is near and dear to my heart. Um, but I give a lot of credit to that through my activities in Grange and growing up here in Chautauqua what County. What an interesting combination. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we were talking before the show, if, if, if you're a home ec teacher, you can work anywhere in the world. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a sign language, you can work, work anywhere yeah. in the universe. <laughs> I mean, that's even, even more unique. Yeah. So, Elaine so. is highly employable. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Okay. So. Opal, would you like to say a few words about... Mm -hmm. Well, I've always lived in the country. Mm -hmm. I graduated from Beam the old Bemis Point Central High School in 1950. And uh, my husband, Norman Sprague, I met through 4-H. And uh, he went in service after he came back we got married and I moved to Sprague Hill on a dairy farm so I lived there for 60 years 65 <laughs> years and uh, then uh, we finally no one in the family wanted the farm and had been in the farm for well over a hundred years oh gosh, yeah. but uh, we moved to a one-story house on about two miles from home mm -hmm. in a different township. So that was a whole different ball game. <laughs> different zip code. Right, right. So anyway, that's uh, the story of my life. I've been active in 4-H. I, 
I uh, joined 4-H when I was almost 10. They decided that spring that we could join before we were actually 10. Mm -hmm. So three girls joined 4-H, and that was the beginning of my 4-H career. Uh, eventually, I worked in the 4-H office as a program assistant for 25 years. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And then, then I was kind of on call because mm -hmm. their secretary was going to college part-time, and at that time, they felt they needed a body in the office <laughs> all the time, so, so sometimes I got called you, back you to meet that body. <laughs> so I guess that's... Uh, and you still volunteer with 4-H, right? A with little, little bit. I'm on, program, right? I'm on the uh, Home Economics Committee, okay. and uh, last night we had our annual style review. <laughs> Which has changed some over it's the, a fashion the years. Show. Yeah. A fashion, oh, a fashion, fashion show where the kids make their own clothing. Uh, yeah, oh. they they learn to sew their own. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, a lot of them do quilting and that sort mm -hmm. of thing besides mm -hmm. sewing yeah. for themselves. But uh, I've probably taught a hundred kids or so At something least. about <laughs> sewing <laughs> through the years. Yeah. So. Yeah. At least. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think everybody should know how to sew on a bar. Well, I, 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 I've got yeah. good news. i got good news. My grandmother was a seamstress, and she made drapes and things like mm -hmm. that. And uh, there was just the two of us, me and my brother. My brother would leave the room, and Graham would show me how to sew. Okay. <laughs> yeah. good. I mean, people say, well, you know, why, what are you doing with that, that, that shirt? It's missing a button. I said, not a worry. I got this. Uh, you know, now we know doing? where to That's go. Now good. We, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> she taught me blind stitching and all this other wow. stuff. Wow. Right. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. There you go, your next volunteer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little rusty, but anyways. <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are those are certainly traits that we all could use. Um, as we're going along, I'm going to stop the conversation and ask questions, sure. okay? Mm -hmm. right. So we talked about, so far, I think I heard two, three different organizations, all right? So I'm going to go backwards. 4-H. Grange Rural Mines. Mm -hmm. yep. So let's start with 4-H, go to Grange, and then Rural Mines. Mm -hmm. How's that sound? Sure. <laughs> okay, because I want to do some, I don't, we've talked about 4-H here a little bit in the past because I've had folks from Cornell Extension. Mm -hmm. okay? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So 4-H, I know the H is, there's four H's stand for four different things. Mm -hmm. Heart, hand, something, something. Head, husbandry. head heart, hand, and, and health. Okay. So I still remember the pledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. what what basically is, where is 4-H these days in Chautauqua County? Let's go there. I mean, is it still going? Oh, yeah. It's, yes. It, it, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I'll start and then yeah, yeah, certainly sure. Opal jump in, but 4-H is still alive and well. It's changed quite a bit since I was a member. Mm -hmm. Actually, my first job out of college, I was a 4-H agent mm -hmm. over in Saratoga County, New York, <coughs> over on the other side of the state. Yep. Yeah. And the program, just like FFA, which used to be called mm -hmm. Future Farmers right. in America, mm -hmm. very familiar with that. is now starting to embody more suburban and urban mm -hmm. interests in addition mm -hmm. to rural. Mm -hmm. um, but the program here in Chautauqua County in particular is still very strong, still has a very important agricultural base, mm -hmm. um, but like anything else that's funded by the state, you know, it's, it's a program that's going through a transition. And so the 4-H does a lot of different fundraising activities throughout the year. They just had their green tie event at the Chautauqua Harbor Hotel, okay. actually, that raised quite a bit of money because they can't rely just on the state funding anymore. But it's a program that in the mental health space, which we're here to talk about today, they're very interested in because so many young people are disproportionately impacted by mental health issues. Okay. The last statistic I saw is that one out of every five high school students has contemplated suicide within the last year. 20% of our high school students. And so 4-H is very interested and we're, we're in conversation with them right now. We're not doing a lot of work yet mm -hmm. because Rural Minds is a, a relatively new organization. Correct. But clearly those agricultural youth organizations are going to be very important. Anything else you, you folks would like to share about 4-H? Or? I oh. grew up in 4-H in Chautauqua County and it, uh, that's actually where I remember Jeff was county fair with them showing cattle and um, mm -hmm. I was in the sheep barn though mm -hmm. I had. Um, so I did 
both home economics related projects and also uh, agricultural. Related I know projects. when I go to the fair, you always see the 4 H displays. You yeah. know? Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. in, uh, it could be any fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, uh, I've gone to a number over the years, like Erie County mm -hmm. has yes. 4 H, it's huge 4 H. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But there's, like you said, sewing and there's mm -hmm. art and floral yeah. yes. and all yeah. that sort of thing. All yeah. kinds so of things. So you were more in animal husbandry, the yeah. sheep you said? Yeah. And Jeff, you were more. No, I, d I did the same mm -hmm. dogs, horses, cattle. Yeah. Yep. Even <laughs> rabbits and hamsters. One year. <laughs> <laughs> hamsters. Yep. I've got a story about that. <laughs> 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 oh, well, so, how did you get involved with 4 H? You said at a well, young age. So. I, I started when I was 10. Wow. And uh, among other things, uh, World War II was there, and I remember collecting paper, collecting uh, silver off from cigarette packages mm -hmm. way back. And uh, our 4 H did that. They collected milkweed mm. pods. Mm. The I'm writing this down because we're going to have more questions on this. <laughs> I remember my mom. Died. What was yeah, the right. silver on the cigarette packages? I don't remember that. Is that like a it, silver it band? It was metal. It, no, they were the outside and then they were inside. The whole pack was wrapped with silver paper. Okay, okay. And this yeah. was during the war, right? Yes, yeah, was this was part war. of the war. So, was so, it, it, was so it we were aluminum? saving it, yes. Okay. So it was okay. foil. Oh, you interesting. Know, we, I, we were saving I've heard along, a lot of stories. I had along with you. tin cans. Oh, that I've heard like of. Sure, that. sure. Right. Well, all right, now, God, tell me about uh -huh. the milkweed pods. I, that, yeah. I got those at home. What did you do with those? Uh, they were used for vests. Oh, for the military. Oh, mm -hmm. like yeah. filler. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. the fluffy stuff. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, that my granddaughter loves mm -hmm. those things. She's always blown away. <laughs> yep. So, wow, I would never. So, I did not yes. Know. So, so during the war, we did you know a lot of that sort of community service. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess even today, there's obviously community projects that 4-H mm -hmm. does. Oh, yes. Yeah. So yes. it goes with, with the times. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how how big is 4-H? I mean, is it like really big across? The yeah, the it's, world? It's, is it just United States. What no, it no, mean? it's a it's a global organization, and uh, as I said, it's it's changed quite a bit uh, to encompass the fact that many of the members don't live on farms anymore, no. like the three of us mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. So, in order to continue to grow and be relevant, they've expanded the programming to include things that are of interest as well sure. to young people. you got to go with the times. Yeah, that's yes. right. Mm -hmm. okay. yep. All right, so that's 4-H. So you yep. all were in that yep. from the very beginnings, it sounds like. All right, then now we're talking about Grange. Grange. That's Grange. another level. Yeah. So yeah. where does Grange fit <laughs> okay. into all this? So uh, Grange is a farm or rural family fraternity. And uh, New York State Grange just celebrated its sesquicentennial. We just got done doing a year-long celebration That's for that. That's 150 50 50 years. Yes. Wow. And Grange was started in 1867, 68. And the first Grange in the nation was in Fredonia, New York. Um, so that and it's still there. And it's yes. still there and it's still active. Mm -hmm. um, we belong to Ross Grange. and. Um, I guess I was a Grange member before I was a 4-H'er because mm -hmm. you could join Junior Grange when you were five and 4-H you had to be nine. Mm -hmm. um, I was born on a Grange day. My dad was at a Grange <laughs> meeting and mom <laughs> had to call the neighbor next to the Grange hall to come and get dad so that she could get to the hospital. But um, my parents, um, mom, part of her I do's was she had to say I do to Grange, and she had to join Grange when she became a sprag. <laughs> <laughs> so Before I belonged, I became a sprag. Part, part of the deal, yes. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right so Where I was born part into of the it. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. so all of you are in Grange? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I, I am a latecomer to Grange. I actually just joined the Grange, the Fredonia Grange, two months ago. So well, congratulations. Well, thank you. Th I just learned the secret handshake from yeah. you earlier today. So. <laughs> and, so, and Opal, you've been in the Grange for since you were married? Back yes, okay. yes. All yes, right, sir. so people are thinking, like, I guess I've never heard of the Grange because it's not a particularly well-known organization right. today. Yes. I think yeah. 50 years ago, everybody knew what the Grange was. Right. Okay, so yeah. does it work part in, part, part in hand with 4-H uh, or is it a separate uh, organization? Separate, although Grange did legislation that helped form the land-grant colleges. Okay, Cornell. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. Yes, yep, yep. and um, helped form cooperative extension, too, within the different land-grant colleges okay. uh, across the country. So that is an offshoot, you know, 4-H is one of the, is the youth program of okay. cooperative extension. I'm, I'm gonna go way out on a limb right sure. now, okay? I've studied Grange a little bit. 
and the officer and the structure of your lodges mm -hmm. are very similar to the Masonic lodges. Yes. yes. So is there a connection between the yes, two? Yes, there yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, our founder, who we refer to as fa Father Kelly. Mm -hmm. Oliver Hudson uh, Kelly. Yeah. He went south. He was working for the government after the Civil War, and they sent him down there to see what could be done to help the mess the farmers mm -hmm. were in. Right. And uh, he was a northerner, he wasn't accepted. Yeah. However, he was a Mason and he had a Masonic ring on mm -hmm. and they would accept him <laughs> as a brother Mason. And that's universal as so, well. Yeah. So he decided what we needed was a farm fraternity. And so that's uh, how, how it was started. There were seven founders, each with different background that came together to form what we know as the Grange. And, and nationally, it's been in existence, what, 157 years yes. now? Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. yes. The reason why I asked it, because I, I, mm -hmm. I think I told you folks I'm a, a Freemason, and mm -hmm. when I studied and attended a Grange meeting, I'm sitting there going like, I think I'm in a Masonic class yeah. yeah. yes. yes. here. Because yes. yeah. you had the wardens and the senior mm -hmm. ma uh -huh. master and all right. that sort yes. of thing. And I, I was gonna share something with you all that maybe you did not know, but. I don't know if this is like uh, everybody's got one of these, yeah. but uh, I was oh. given this was yeah. a certificate a number of years ago, and I was named the uh, Grange Person of the Year. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. remember what year, mm -hmm. 2006 maybe, yeah. 2000. Community Service Award, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so and just citizen, if you wanna, yeah. like, so mm -hmm. I put this in a very special place in my office, mm -hmm. and uh, I was really pleased, Art Kinney and, and company, yeah. there uh -huh. it is. Yes. And it is. Uh, so it's like marble, and it's, I mean, <laughs> not everybody's got one of these. No. <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. I just wanna thank the Grange from Ripley Westfield mm -hmm. area. Okay, you got my whiskers in there, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, so I'm, I'm very mm -hmm. I'm very proud to, to bring mm -hmm. that today. Yeah. That, uh, Right. I do have a connection, yeah. but uh, I saw a, str a strong connection between the organizations yep. and mm -hmm. that's right. why. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know that, did you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. No. Yeah. So I'm learning all um, kinds of new stuff. Currently here. in New York State, there's 120 local chapters really? of Grange, and there's about 3,000 members. All right, how about in Chautauqua County? Chautauqua County, I believe, has four Granges, yes. and I don't know the total membership. Um, so, Fredonia, Ross. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're, they're, they're the other mean two? Ripley and Villanova. Okay, mm -hmm. so Ripley yeah. Westfield, I think they yeah. combine, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and there's what, 1,500 organizations across the country. Right. Mm -hmm. And is it throughout the world or just? Um, there were granges in Canada, but right now there's no uh, chapters. We did have some in Ontario. When I was growing up, mm -hmm. I remember in our grange opening ceremonies and we would sing the national anthem, but we also sang O Canada. <laughs> we, we, we do that yeah. in Rotary. Yeah, uh -huh. we, uh, we've it because we're our, yep. our district yep. is same, across us both, yeah. Yeah. and we would start same. with uh, O yeah. Canada, uh -huh. Hail to yeah. the Queen, and things right. like that. Yep. <laughs> and then um, above North Dakota, um, Idaho, mm -hmm. and some of those areas, there were granges in those providences as well. Okay. But I don't believe right now there are currently okay. any active chapters. So it's pretty much in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and really when, when Grange was started, remember it was horse and buggy days. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 150 so years ago. So didn't go too far, so that's why every little hamlet had their own Grange. Right. It's like the Methodist Church, right? Yes, <laughs> right. right. Yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Town has it. Now that's changed. Right. Well, and all the towns are eight miles apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. A horse buggy out and back in yeah. one day, right? Yeah. That's it. Right. And I tell people that, and they go, no. I get a map mm -hmm. out. We pull out a map. I go, how far? Okay. How far? You're yeah. right. I go, right. You know, Libby, in Chautauqua County, uh, I, I wasn't born here, but I felt like I was just like dropped in the wrong place when I was born. I was born <laughs> in Buffalo, but I always, since I ever, I've been here over 50 years now, <laughs> and uh, I just, this feels always good to me, oh. you know, that this is where I should be. Yeah. Right. And uh, I just love, you know, through scouts and things like that. <laughs> so, all right, so we talked about 4-H, and we, we talked <laughs> about, you know, the, <laughs> the, the farm connection, and the Grange is the sort of an extension of that concept, but but it's an organization for the farmers more? Um, rural people are interested in rural communities. Um, now we really focus a lot on community service and um, helping in any way. It's a grassroots organization. So what my Grange does in Delaware County might be different than what Chautauqua County is so doing in Fredonia. Of the local yes. area. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and your local membership and a lot of Grange members in my Grange are people that have retired to the area from yeah. downstate New York. Mm -hmm. So our Grange has a little different flavor than, you know, some 
out here would be more Midwestern flavor. All right, so let me ask a technical question. So 4-H, you, you're involved, involved with farming stuff. Mm -hmm. to, be in a, uh, to be a Grange member, do you have to be a farmer? No. no. So no. it's Inter like interested in agriculture. You eat, don't you? So you're <laughs> interested. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do that well, yes. <laughs> according to my doctor too well. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anybody could join Grange. Yes. Okay. Yes. So are there any requirements, or do you have to go through um, the process well, of the, being? There's you know, annual dues, but mm -hmm. um, certainly there. Uh, Grange's, uh, since it's a fraternal organization, there's actually seven degrees, there's uh, seven levels of membership. Really? The first four degrees oh. are for your local membership. Mm -hmm. um, and degrees aren't done as much today as they used to be. Right. So there are some obligation um, programs that you can do. So it's kind of a, like becoming a Grange member on mm -hmm. high the speed. shorter version. Right. <laughs> so uh, there's that. The fifth degree is your county level. We call it Pomona. Um, Grange, because of its agricultural oh, I've seen background. Pomona, Pomona Grange. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so not a place. Pomona Grange is a, a region. Okay. Um, so that's your county level. The state level, the degree is called Flora. So we're starting to get a theme now with the uh, Agriculture. Uh, agricultural Flora, graces. I, I have five yeah. years of Latin. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And National Grange is seventh degree, and that is the degree of series. Okay. So um, all of them are based on uh, agricultural lessons, uh, lessons of life, um, preparation, and um, cultivation, and then um, the fruits of our labor. And, and there's lots of metaphors in, in, yes. in all of this, is like yes. leading good life. Um, mm -hmm protecting the earth and, and yes. the environment and being a good person, you know, yeah, and yes. cultivating mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. behavior and mm -hmm. stuff. So yeah, I, I, I see that. Fellowship is yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. big point. Yeah, too. that's interesting. Okay, so now we have the Grange that's doing community work. So here in Chautauqua County, what kind of community work do people do? Like what what, what would your your lodge be doing in Well, we, we should talk about the Rural Resilience Program Yes. Yep. And, and an award that Opal got actually recently at the National Convention. So one of the national programs that we have launched uh, is in conjunction with the National Grange and Rural Mines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where we're doing a series of community events across the country. But in particular... You want to move the hat? You know, yeah. look this, perfect, perfect. This, this is a very highly sought after award that Opal won at the National Convention, which was in Niagara Falls this past year. Mm -hmm. And this was for a program she put on in Falconer at the Ross Grange Hall. That was done in conjunction with Rural Minds, my organization, mm -hmm. yeah. and New York Farm Dot, which okay, let's we've hold talked on. about. Jeff, I think we have a picture of uh, Opal getting her award, and we'll pop that up as we're yep. going. Yep. So what was the topic of your presentation? He, he was there for rural minds, mm -hmm. but as secretary, I was just doing my job, <laughs> uh, doing PR, getting the word out. There I got the is. radio station there and mm -hmm. yep. various things. Well, they were, yeah, she had in radio the, and television in person at, yeah. at the meeting. So this is a picture of Opal with the past president and the current president mm -hmm. of the National Grange, and it well, was these, these are like the, the high up. Yep, right? yeah. Wow. yeah, these are the <laughs> way up there. Yeah, <laughs> and this was in front of hundreds of people that were at the National Grange. It was a surprise to oh, nice. Opal when That's she great. came, but they they honored her because of this program she put on on rural mental health, and it was standing room only. The thing that impressed me is a number of the people. It was held in the afternoon at the former mm -hmm. Ross Grange Hall. And people literally were bringing their kids out of school to bring them over. And people were taking delayed lunches at their work wow. so they could come mm -hmm. to this meeting. So it really worked better for some people being in the daytime than an evening meeting. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, congratulations. But, yeah, this was a, a wonderful honor, mm -hmm. and we were thrilled that Opal. And, and Elaine did a similar program yeah. over in her neck of the woods yeah. in Delaware County that also was well attended. Yes. So um, I borrowed some of my mom's documents and, and <laughs> her grange and things, you know, right, invent the, reinvent the wheel. Um, but we had, we called it a mental health symposium mm -hmm. um, evening. Jeff came out to that. He was our key speaker, but we also had a speaker from FarmNet 
um, which is through cooperative ex or through you, Cornell. You've about yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. and so yeah. Uh, we also had uh, we have an organization in Stanford. It's called Stanford Wellness. It's a nonprofit organization that will provide counseling, mental health counseling, uh, on a sliding pace scale. Um, so they were there, uh, they're a newer organization in our area. And then we also had a woman, um, Ellen Green Stewart, who happened to be a school psychologist in the school district that I worked mm -hmm. in. And she wrote a book, Mental Health in Rural America, oh, wow, in perfect. 2018. And so she uh, talked a little bit about her book. So I brought um, you that. You can hold that up, we're going to give her a little yeah. promotion here. <laughs> yeah, so she she doesn't even know that I'm here. And you doing that today. I'm sure you can find this on Amazon. <laughs> yes, yes. And so uh, what's the name again? Um, Middle Mental Health in Rural America by Ellen Green Stewart. Okay. Green with an E. Okay. And um, 2018 is the. Um, but I really like the picture because it's a farm with a silo mm -hmm. and the rainbow you yeah. know, giving hope. Yeah. yeah. So um, you know, I think that's I want to interject picture. something right now. Is is that. Uh, Oh boy, how do I put this? In, in Chautauqua County, lots of times people don't give us as much credit as we should to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Opal, you represented Chautauqua County and the whole region at a national level. Yes, that yes. was a surprise. And we've got people doing those I, sorts of things like all the time, yeah. and we don't yeah. pat ourselves enough on the back. Yeah. So well, I, I was supposed to be going because Elaine was getting an award. <laughs> well, it of didn't course. take me too long to figure out I was going for something for me, but I, I didn't have a clue what, what I had done that I should be going to make. Thinly veiled, I yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but her events now have been used as a model across the country mm -hmm. yeah. for other granges in other parts Wonderful. of the United right. States. Trendsetter. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I told Jeff, because now we've got the resiliency program, mm -hmm. and I said, boy, I wish all those materials were available to us a year ago. It would have made our promotion <laughs> yeah. so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but National Grange actually has a new theme mm -hmm. or um, motto this year. We have a new national president, sure. and it's called Grange Strong, um, Rooted, Resilient, and United. And I think it's so neat that the resilient is the middle part of that, yeah. and we have the resiliency program mm -hmm. now um, in conjunction with Rural Minds. Okay. So, for h we talked we talked about now Grange and the, and the work that you're mm -hmm. doing, you know, bringing mm -hmm. folks together in communities. And um, I don't know how it is for you, but I know in various organizations that I've been in or am in, we struggle for membership. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that as well as trying to get younger folks to come in? Oh. Yes, um, you know, busy lives. Um, there's always been two working parents in you know, any mm -hmm. family, whether they're uh, a traditional nuclear family or not, um, just what type of work. Um, but making time for your community and making time for fellowship with others, um, you know, reconnecting. Um, I just think back to when I first heard of Rural Minds and it was on the program for our State Grange Convention uh, two years ago and um, we get the program of the schedule of what's going to be happening at the state convention. Mom had gotten that and Jeff Winton's name was on it and she said, is that our Jeff Winton? And I said, yes, Mom, that's our, that's our Jeff Winton. That's our Jeff Winton. This is my award. I thought he was in jail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so um, you know, we were looking forward. So, it was released on good behavior. <laughs> so, so New York State got a preview of Rural Minds and um, its purposes. Mm -hmm. Uh, before National Grange uh, did, mm -hmm. as far as the total membership. Yeah. So I'll re echo what I just said. So now here we go again. Yeah. Somebody locally getting us on the national stage, and congratulations for Thank your you. work, because I know you got a big award not too long ago. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Patrick sends me stuff on a regular <laughs> basis <laughs> yeah. through the newsletter. Uh, so I do get the newsletters, yeah, but I got the others. <laughs> yeah, but, anyways, it's okay, Patrick. <laughs> so we got about 14 minutes left to go, which is a lot of time. So now let's take it to the next level, the rural minds and you said you, you you saw his program what what interested you in what he was talking um, about well f first you know I was like well I've known Jeff since I was a little girl yeah but being a teacher and seeing the struggles that a lot of my students had within their families um, the other organization in Stanford Stanford Wellness was started by one of my colleagues. She was a special education teacher and mm -hmm. just realized that in her resource room classes, 
she wasn't just teaching subjects, she was really helping kids above and beyond what the school um, counselors could do and, and yeah. things. And so I think, you know, just that heart um, and being in home economics, you're into a, human development, personal development, and teaching a lot of those things. So I think that um, Jeff's story resonated, you know, being from my hometown mm -hmm. and, you know, home county, of course. Um, but even our family has had some struggles. My mm -hmm. great grandfather uh, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. um, I had a cousin that committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So um, those things that I know that is not a politically correct term anymore. <laughs> we've we've um, changed that vocabulary um, to be a little bit softer and things and more accepting. But just mental health struggles uh, that people have. Depression. I mean, depression. Yeah. Yeah. Divorce. Yeah. Uh, all yeah, those things. Yeah, so, oh. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. A hard times managing stress in our lives, the right. negative stress, mm -hmm. not the use. Yeah, and we had this thing called the pandemic that didn't yes. help. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's for sure. You know, I was so. in my office, I'm the town historian in Ripley, and I have a pile of papers that fortunately sometimes I actually do think ahead and every day during the pandemic I took the newspaper and I made a pile and it's about three feet high <laughs> and so I said one of these days I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna cut out all the articles that had to do with the pandemic. Oh. <laughs> and I, I'm going really quick here, but I started clipping them backwards. So I started at the oh. end of the mm -hmm. pandemic and I haven't gotten mm -hmm. down to the beginning. But I was realizing sports, businesses, mm -hmm. everything was effective where they say, well, we're reopening. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And I thought, you forget, we closed mm -hmm. everything down. down. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people got to realize we went through a very mm -hmm. tough time yeah. and we're still dealing with the aftermath. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, 4-H, Grange, and now you've joined forces together with Rural Minds. Mm -hmm. yep. Jeff, you, if you want to reintroduce Rural Minds for my audience, and we got about 12 minutes. Yeah, certainly. And I won't go into all the detail because we've had the opportunity to discuss this well, before. we can review the high points here. But Rural Minds was founded due to a family tragedy in my family mm -hmm. from a long line of dairy farmers in the Sinclairville area. And my 28-year-old nephew, Brooks, uh, died by suicide and was struggling and didn't tell anyone, uh, including the family. Yeah. And as a result, my late mother, who was a friend of Opal's, and her name was Elaine as well, uh, said, we've got to do something about this because there is an inequity in rural America that there are a lot of great efforts taking place in the mental health space but most of them were geared towards urban and suburban mm -hmm. audiences. Mm -hmm. So my mom, who was a very quiet, behind the scenes, shy woman, um, really started this national mm -hmm. movement oh, wow. um, after her death. I mean, it was mm -hmm. one of the things we started talking about after my nephew died, but after my mom passed away a few years ago, um, Rural Minds really took shape and we launched two and a half years ago. So. We are focused on the 46 million people that live in rural America. 46 million, that's a big part of our population. Yeah. And there is a tremendous inequity when it comes to healthcare in general, mm -hmm. but especially mental health care. Yeah. Um, we still, unfortunately, are battling the stigma. Mental illness is still highly stigmatized, especially in rural America. And so storytelling has become a very important part of this. This is why whenever I give presentations, I start with my family story. Mm -hmm. The story mm -hmm. these right. yeah. ladies just shared about their own family story are so important because we need to personalize this. We need to put a human face to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And when other people hear what our families have gone through, all of a sudden the floodgates open. Yeah. Um, my nephew's funeral, um, was a prime example of that. We, we talked in detail uh, during the eulogy about his death. After his funeral was over, we had farm families lined up for hours mm -hmm. to tell us their story. Mm -hmm. And that's when my mother said, we've got to do something about this. So when we launched two and a half years ago, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. but we wanted to find another organization that was already highly respected in rural America. Mm -hmm. That was a grassroots mm -hmm. organization that we could partner with. And the National Grange Perfect. made all mm -hmm. kinds of sense yeah. because of their longevity and the fact that 
They're in 1,500 locations. Yeah, why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. All yeah. right, let's hold it. I thought we have a phone call. Okay. okay. Good morning, caller. Uh, good morning, Jack, and good morning, guests. Uh, you're doing wonderful. This is Linda Spaulding. Morning, Linda. Uh, this suicide prevention is so, so important. Uh, it's such a devastating thing, and um, it, it's, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Mm-hmm. And okay. uh, people really, people need to be informed. There's so much that people don't know about um, suicide and people who are suffering from this deep depression. Right. So thank you for your great work. And also I wanted to thank you, Doc, and everybody there for helping us publicize our derby party last Saturday at the Veterans, the VFW. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, we, we had a hilarious time. Good. And we turned over $1,001 to the Veterans. Well done. Good. And Linda, did your horse win? Mm -hmm. uh, forever young, forever young. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, I, I didn't but, have a bet in that race. <laughs> Well, I'm glad. I, I was going to put, put it like a uh, place so that if it comes one, two, or three, but you know that there was a fight between uh, one and uh, Forever Young. Mm -hmm. uh, because did you know that the jockeys were fighting? Uh, no, I don't. I know it was a photo finish. That's all I saw. It was amazing. So. They were fighting, and the Sierra, whatever it was, number one, grabbed a hold of the. Of the of the horse, oh, forever dear. young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were bickering, and they were surprised nobody did anything about it. Okay, well, you heard first here, folks. <laughs> uh, we want a, a re recall. We want to. <laughs> I don't want to hold you up, okay, but, but thank yeah. you, thank you again for your wonderful work, okay. and ha happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and okay. ladies. Thanks, Lynn. All right, you. you take care. You too. Yeah. Okay, so rural America, Chautauqua mm -hmm. County. Um, you know, just as an aside, is that I live in Ripley, and if I talk to people on the other side of the county, and I'll say, I'll take 10 people, I'll say, where's Ripley? They'll say, Ohio. <laughs> and I go, no, we're <laughs> part of New York State <laughs> because we're so rural. And yeah. they, mm -hmm. they don't realize, sometimes they, sell, they mm -hmm. might say Pennsylvania, but a lot of times they get Ohio. <laughs> uh, and, and the same goes for, like, I think, Poland mm -hmm. and Villanova and, oh, yeah. and the other side of the county, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we forget that we are little communities, yeah. you know, Arkwright and, mm -hmm. and all those, yeah. you know, little places. And uh, that's what makes up the fa fabric mm -hmm. of our county. That makes mm -hmm. it so cool. Mm -hmm. But all this ties us together, but it also isolates us. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a lot of it is the isolation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Last week, I had Judy Rhoda and company, and they are doing their outreach with a mobile unit mm -hmm. to get into the, into the fabric of our county in the area. Yep. So what's going on in the big picture then? Let's put this all now on yep. your lap. So yep. what's going on? Rural well, the, the good news is people mm -hmm. are now talking about this, and mm -hmm. that's where this has to continue. Mm -hmm. Up until recently, um, people didn't want to talk about this uh, because mental illness was considered more of a character flaw mm -hmm. or a personality mm -hmm. issue. Yeah. Suck it As, up. Suck yep, it up. Suck it up. Pull mm -hmm. yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah. Being weak. We are tough, independent farm people, mm -hmm. and we don't talk about our issues. Mm -hmm. And mental illness is as much of an illness as cancer is, mm -hmm. as diabetes is, and heart disease, and we've got to start treating it as such. So we're trying to drag this topic out of the dark mm -hmm. recesses of yep. closets right now mm -hmm. to get people to finally start talking about this. And that's where, again, the Rural Resilience Program has been so critically important mm -hmm. is that the Granges across this country are adopting this program as their community service mm -hmm. outreach, but also to help build the Grange organization. So mm -hmm. you ask about are the Granges growing? A mm -hmm. lot of young people mm -hmm. are very interested in this topic. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's re-energizing certain Granges because young people are saying, okay, well the Grange, I do need to look into that mm -hmm. because they're putting together this program that's very relevant mm -hmm. to my generation. Okay, so when we say program, you're not psychologists, you're not counselors, mm -hmm. what are you doing? So we're doing basically a mental illness 101 seminar. So 
when we do these programs, and you can find all the materials on our website, which is ruralminds.org, mm -hmm. or you can find them also on the National Grange website. Yeah, okay. Nationalgrange.org. And these are materials, PowerPoint presentations, fact sheets, press releases, anything you need to put together a program. And this program was designed not only to be used by the Grange, but to be used by 4-H groups, FFA church groups, Anybody, right? other communities of, of faith, anyone who is part of a community organization. In many cases, like we did in both of these cases we've talked about, we do partner with mental health providers so that if someone has a specific question, that needs to be asked of a professional as opposed to a layperson like myself. Right, right. I'm not a, a trained mm -hmm. clinical psychologist. Right. We have someone there. So that's where our partnership in New York with the New York mm -hmm. FarmNet comes in. But we also partner because we are national in scope. We're based here in, in Mayville. Yeah. Uh, Chautauqua County is our headquarters, but we are national in scope and quickly becoming international. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been invited to a conference in Portugal in June, uh, one of three organizations in the United States wow, to be inter nice. uh, invited to this yep. meeting because other parts of the world oh, yeah. are yeah. rural as well. Absolutely. Yep. And they're very interested in what we're doing mm -hmm. with rural minds here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. we're trying to, again, take this topic to where people are already congregating. It, it's terrific what Judy and her group are doing where they've got the mobile mm -hmm. unit going out, but we also know that there are a lot of people that don't necessarily want to be seen going into a, right. a, a health care provider. Right. And folks nowadays, they're Googling things. Yep. Oh, yes. out, well, how do I do this yep. quietly at home? So yep. you guys yep. would be a great resource. Yep. Okay. So these are materials that people can access themselves mm -hmm. or if they want to do a meeting, um, it makes it very easy. It's a meeting in a box or a toolkit, if you will. Okay. So. Summarize up to this point. So the Grange and Rural Minds have forged a, a relationship yep. to help yes. folks in rural America. Yes. Now, with senior citizens, is this an issue with uh, mental health? I think it is. Mm -hmm. They may not want to think so, but right. I think a lot of Loss of spouses, health, yeah. you know. Exactly. All that sort of isolation once again. Yes. You know, when my mom passed, my, my dad was very, very alone, you know, and mm -hmm. I would try to visit him as often as I could. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's especially winter times. Mm -hmm. All right, we're down to a minute and a half, so I'm going to go right down the line. So, okay. Elaine, you got the first uh, moment here. Um, just remember about the connection between Grange and Rural Mines and the toolkit that has been formed and it's easy access. Um, remember that you're not alone and there's a lot of people and resources to help. The problem in rural America is figuring out where those resources are located. Okay, and you're there to help. Mm -hmm. The award-winning Opal Spray? <laughs> uh, uh, well, I think that as Grangers, most of us belong to lots of other things. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's yeah. my fair hat yeah. that yeah. they told me I should bring. Yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is, this is Opal her Hallmark. Everybody <laughs> knows Opal because of her hat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I've been on the county fair board for years. <laughs> okay. And yeah. uh, here she comes. The, the women had them with a little tassel. Uh -huh. So yeah. I still have mine. And <laughs> I'm, I'm only an honorary. No, but I go to the fair. Oh, everybody knows who you are. Oh, yeah. yes, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I wear my hat. Absolutely, <laughs> so. I can see you coming. Jeff, you get the last 25 yeah, seconds here. The last thing I would say is that there are a lot of resources on our website, ruralminds.org, that should be helpful, but please remember the 988 Eight number. number. Yeah. If you or anyone in your family yeah. or community are in stress, Dial 988 and you will be connected with a live health care provider that can help you through that situation. Okay, Jeff and Opal and Elaine, thanks for joining us today. This is all part of a mental health awareness yes, month, right? right? That's and right. And if you see a lot of commercials on TV, there's I see a lot yes. of them. So We're thank you for what you all are doing. <laughs> this is huge. And we appreciate all of you here in Chautauqua County and the work, of course, mm -hmm. you're Portugal are doing around the world. All right, folks, uh, please, if you want to look at this uh, show again, it's on YouTube forever and ever. And uh, please remember 988. That can save your life or someone else's, okay? Happy Mother's Day to all of you that are celebrating and, and get together and appreciate those moms out there. All right, I'm Doc Hamels. We're going to do this all again next Saturday morning right here at Access Chautauqua in Mayville, New York. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye-bye now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Tied it all together, right? Yeah.